Hey, this is Keith at Half Tracks and Honey Bees. Uh, the bees are behaving pretty good today, uh, no swarms that I know of, uh, so I thought I'd take a few minutes and do something different. Uh, I've had a lot of folks request uh, more information about my uh, half track uh, named Bertha, so I'm going to do a walkabout today. Uh, just kind of walk around her and talk to y'all like I would if I was at an event or a show, and uh, folks come up and start asking questions, and I just kind of walk around and talk about her. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, the basics, she's a 1941 M2A1 half track. And was, uh, was modified to an M2A1 early in her life. At that point, they modified the bogey system slightly uh, and they uh, added the pulpit up on top with the uh, 50 cal. That was just part of the mods. But I bought her from a uh, old electronics teacher of mine, uh, actually a, a local fella. He had bought her out of Texas back in 2000, had, uh, had her hauled up here. Uh, and done a few things to her, had acquired a few parts, uh, and I think it turned into a bigger project than what he wanted to mess with. So uh, after I got through doing my dad's, uh, um, restoring my dad's 1955 uh, M38A1 Jeep, I had such a good time, I thought I would go over and talk to him about the half track. And uh, when I saw it, I fell in love and I'm like, yeah, I can do that. So, uh, so here's some pictures uh, when I first found her uh, in the barn. This is, uh, these are taken uh, from the loft and, uh, and uh, in areas around her, you can kind of see what kind of shape she was in. Now here are a few shots when I, I had her drug home with a wrecker. Uh, at that point, my wife pretty much was sure I was crazy. There were also a lot of uh, uh, pieces, parts that I had to bring home uh, that I used my little 99 Ranger and uh, uh, ended up having to put a transmission in the Ranger after I got all the parts hauled home. So uh, it pretty much killed my little truck. So anyway, uh, We'll just, like I say, just walk around her and uh, I'll talk about things as I see them. Uh, I don't have any cheat sheets. This is all just from my feeble memory. So uh, all you hardcore folks, if I see something stupid, you can let me know in the comments. But uh, otherwise, I'll try to tell you, you know, what I know about it and uh, what I understand about it. So uh, anyway, here we go. Now, one other thing, um, a little bit of history for the half track that, uh, that came with it when I got her. I mentioned it earlier that the uh, the fella I got it from got it out of Texas back in 2000. Um, she was used on a uh, military base in uh, Colorado back during the war for uh, training. Uh, she never went overseas. Uh, most of the equipment, uh, like her, if it did go overseas, they didn't uh, they didn't bring it back. So, uh, but she never went overseas. She was used out in uh, out west in a in a training facility. Um, I kind of always think of that the. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure you could bet that all the fellas that trained on her, uh, probably all of them didn't come home. So she could kind of be my tribute to, uh, to those guys that, um, that gave their life for their country. Um, it's just a little something I can do. I didn't serve in the military, but I can, uh, I can help keep this old military stuff running. So um, speaking of running, um, after she got through at the uh, military base in Colorado, supposedly she was sold to a railroad and they used her to uh, move rail cars around in the yard. So after she did that for several years, they uh, uh, sold her to the fella in Texas and uh, she sat outside in Texas for, I don't know, pick a number. Uh, she's 80 years old, so she might have sat outside in Texas for 50 years. I don't know. You know, thankfully they had a dry climate and uh, I had quite a bit of rust to deal with. Uh, a lot of stuck frozen bolts, uh, suspension froze up, the bogies froze up, but uh, if it had been a wet climate, she would have been uh, a whole lot worse. But uh, a lot of folks want to hear what she sounds like because they're expecting her to be uh, very loud. But surprisingly, she's very quiet. So there we are idling at about 400 RPMs.
very smooth and very quiet. like a sewing machine. Okay, starting at the front. Um, I guess the biggest thing that pops out at you to begin with is this, uh, this big old winch. Um, it's a Tulsa 18G and uh, they rate it at uh, 10 tons or uh, 20,000 pounds. Uh, there's about 220 foot of uh, 5 8 inch cable wound up on the spool. So, uh, you know, they would use this to uh, get their buddies out of trouble as well as uh, get themselves out of trouble um, if they ever needed to. But with the tracks and the ability to also put the front the front wheels in, uh, in gear, uh, if you get this thing stuck, then uh, you've probably really done something stupid. The, uh, like we said earlier, her name is Bertha. Uh, Bertha was the name of my great aunt. They lived in that little house up there behind the trees. You can't see very good. Uh, but my great aunt and uncle, Sampson and Bertha, here's a picture of them. Yeah, they didn't get electricity until the mid 80s. Uh, they were two tough old birds, especially Bertha. Um, but you never met uh, two people any happier than they were. Uh, they, were just, uh, they were just good people. Now the big 10 here, you see that on a lot of tanks and uh, other military equipment. That's called a bridge plate. Um, usually in the military, uh, you either want to blow up a bridge or you want to protect a bridge according to what you're doing with it. Well, the bridge plate, uh, if you wanted to keep the bridge, you usually left somebody there in charge of the bridge. And, uh, and this would let them know what the vehicle weighed so they know whether to let you across the bridge or not. So obviously they don't want you to kill their bridge if, uh, if they're trying to save it. So the bridge plate is in tons, so that's rated at uh, 10 tons. So that, that lets the, the guy protecting the bridge know when, when uh, half track cruises up that uh, it weighs about 20,000 pounds at the most, and uh, he can uh, say uh, yes or no if you get to cross the bridge. The, uh, the louvers in the front are over the radiator, and you can open and close those uh, to keep the, uh, the bad guys from uh, shooting holes in the radiator. All the armor on the, the half track is quarter inch uh, face hardened armor. So, uh, you know, it would stop 30 cal, 45 uh, shotgun, if you had a shotgun. Uh, but any kind of armor piercing stuff is probably going to go through it. That's one of the reasons uh, a lot of the uh, infantry guys really didn't like riding in half tracks. They had a bad, uh, a bad thing about uh, a bullet would go in one side and then just kind of bounce around which uh, if you were sitting in the back and there was a bullet bouncing around, that would uh, not be a good thing. But I just reached in there. You can see uh, the louvers are closed now. And uh, that's just a little lever on the, uh, the co-driver's side that you can use to do that with. Right here. Okay. Uh, that helmet is from a... Uh, uh, a German fella. I heard he didn't make it. Um, not really sure about that. The uh, the headlights were a newer style headlights they used on uh, on uh, the later half tracks and the uh, the conversions. These were uh, removable. You could uh, this little uh, thing back here on the back. You can unscrew that, and this whole uh, headlight comes out. You can see some in the back later when we go back there. I've got some spares. Uh, but supposedly that was so you could. Uh, Remove the headlights so they don't get damaged by by gunfire. Um, I'm not sure how many people actually pulled over and said like wait a minute guys We got to pull our headlights before we go into battle. Um, I'm not sure that really ever happened, but uh, but anyway uh, Let's see we got camo nets on both sides uh, That's so you could uh, cover up the half track. So from the air you can't really see it Now we got the big 
white AX160 engine or 160 AX. Uh, engine probably weighs 1,200 pounds, uh, very low compression. It's a 386 cubic inch uh, flathead, runs on gas, and uh, gets about three miles to the gallon. And it knocks out a whopping 147 horsepower. Uh, transmission wise, it's a four speed, but you've got a high and low range, so I've got eight forward gears and two uh, reverses. So uh, to make up for the lack of horsepower, you got lots of gears. Um, you got a huge generator down here, regular points ignition. The cable coming out of it is for the tack drive. It's a mechanical drive coming out. We'll show you the tack in a few minutes. Big voltage regulator up here on the back with the uh, uh, with the red uh, emblem on it. Um, but like you, like I said, it's a, a flat head. You can see the you can see the head. Um, it's flat. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, notice they use these brass pieces on the on the uh, pipes going to the radiator. That's kind of cool. Big lunker. Uh, water pump so uh and you've also got this this air intake down here that runs to the vents um we found that that's pretty handy in the winter time to keep you warm but in the summertime you really just want to keep the vents closed then you got an overflow tank for the radiator uh spare gas can water can according to what you want to use them for uh this is a canvas um water uh can that you can use it's, it's lined so that uh, it doesn't leak you've got what they call pioneer tools on the side you've got a shovel and a matic on this side uh, you got an axe on the other side you've got a storage compartment with shelves you can store ammo mines whatever you wanted to store in there got a couple of bags hanging here uh, they would be used for the uh, but the guys riding in the half track, you know, this is their home. Everything that they've got is on this half track. So uh, um, they would use these bags to put personal items, you know, what, whatever they think they might need or what they've got. Okay, looking around a little bit more. Up here, you've got your uh, windshield armor. You can see it's, it's standing up on these three stands. You can lift it up and these little stands fold down and then the windshield armor will fold down and. Uh, and uh, over the windshield. Now you have to take out the uh, window glass, which is easy to do, or uh, you'll bust it out when you put the, uh, put the armor down. But you can, uh, when you do that, obviously all you have to look through is the little pistol port. And you can do the same thing here on the side. You can put the armor up on the sides of the vehicle to protect the driver, but then once again, all you've got is this little pistol port to look out of. So no, not a whole lot of uh, a vision once you put all the armor down or up. Okay, we'll go inside now. Okay, you got your basic uh, clutch brake accelerator. Nothing really uh, out of the ordinary there. Uh, your first handle here, you've got the control for the winch. You've got forward and reverse. It's driven off the uh, PTO on the transmission. you got several shift levers here. Uh, the first one right here is going to be your, uh, your four-speed in reverse. Then you've got your uh, handbrake. Then you've got high and low range. And then you've got uh, putting the uh, front wheels in and out of gear. Okay, over here you've got the first of some of your uh, gauges. You've got that mechanical tack that I told you about that runs off of the distributor. Uh, this thing red lines at a, a whopping 3,000 RPMs. Uh, big old long stroke flathead, so you're not going to turn a lot of RPM. But the military likes to put labels on everything, how to do stuff. So don't operate the engine over 2,000 RPM till it gets warmed up. Then you got your little plate showing your uh, your gears, uh, handbrake, transfer case, and then the uh, some information on your uh, your front wheel drive. You got the uh, vacuum powered uh, windshield wiper motors, which power these tiny little windshield wiper blades. Which uh, the blades and the arms are basically, uh, uh, I believe, Model A uh, Ford, as is the uh, gas pedal. Which I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, 
You got a compass. Obviously to show direction. You've got this control here, which is a resistor that controls the amount of power going to the brakes if you're hauling a trailer. Uh, so you've got electric brakes on the trailer. There's a, a plug on the back. You got your light switch here, which is kind of cool because it's most of your military stuff. I can put on the uh, uh, blackout lights, but it won't let me pull it any further unless I push the button in and then I can pull it out. A lot of military vehicles have something like that to keep you from being a dummy and turning your lights on uh, when the enemy's around and giving up your uh, your location. So, uh, so this uh, button right here is just a safety so you don't do something stupid. Then you got your instrument clusters here, which which to me is very cool looking, uh, almost like, almost like Art Deco or something, you know, to be in a in an army vehicle, but. Uh, you got your amps for charging, you got your fuel tanks, uh, your oil pressure, you got your temperature gauge, your speed over here with a resettable odometer, and then your mileage. Uh, your main switch here, you can turn it on and off, and then the push button for the starter. Uh, notice it don't have a key. Uh, really, a key is not something that you want to have to keep up with in the military. If the bad guys are coming, you don't want to be saying who's got the keys. So, uh, you really don't, don't need that. Uh, you got another uh, switch for your blackout lights, once again with the safety button. Uh, you got a uh, left tank, right tank, so you can flip that and uh, decide which which of the rear tanks you're reading on the uh, fuel gauge. You got a little voltmeter right here that reads volts when you push the little button below it. Um, so you can make sure that the batteries are charged and the uh, generator is charging properly. Uh, you've got vent buttons or vent pull pull cables as well as throttle and choke. Down here you've got a uh, intercom box so you can talk to the guys in the back with all the racket going on as, as well as a, uh, a uh, microphone. You know with a with a push button on the side and uh, so you can talk to the guys in the back. And this is pretty cool you see the same microphone in a lot of uh, old military movies used on uh, battleships and uh, all kinds of different things. Now on my little keychain here, I've got this one uh, uh, 30 caliber cartridge that I've got on the keychain. I found it up under the dash when I was restoring it. When I pulled that uh, brass looking uh, uh, tank out from under the dash, this uh, this cartridge fell out. Which uh, so I, I drilled a hole in it and kept it. I thought that was uh, was was pretty cool. Um, for extra points. Here's a clicker. Now for extra points, whoever can uh, tell me in the comments what that is for, uh, I'll give you an attaboy. Now the big tank looking thing under here was actually the uh, container for the uh, noise suppression coil and capacitor. Uh, noise suppression was very important on these old vehicles. Uh, for, for those of y'all that are old like me, you can remember back when uh, AM FM radio, you had a lot of trouble keeping the spark plugs and alternator and generator. Everything wanted to make whiny noises and staticky noises in your radio. Well, if you've got a radio in the in the half track, obviously you want to keep that uh, that noise out of the radio. But it's also used to suppress that noise because the bad guys could pick up that noise on their receivers just like you did on your radio in your 57 Chevrolet. So the bad guys could tell you were coming by the noise put out by the electrical system on the vehicle. So they did a lot of stuff to suppress that noise. They've got the big dash over here to haul some miscellaneous stuff in. Like I said, we saw that a while ago, the handle that you can open and close the louvers. Then you got this little mystery bracket down here uh, that nobody really knows what it was used for. Uh, you ask all the... Uh, half-track experts and nobody can really agree what exactly that was for. So there's you another uh, question you can answer in the comments if uh, if you can. Now on this side you've got the uh, data plate with a lot of information on the vehicle. Uh, that's an original data plate with the, uh, the correct serial number, ordinance number, gross weight, towing ability. Um, you notice the uh, I told you it had a very low uh, compression engine. You know, it's wanting the uh, really high quality uh, 80 octane. 
So, uh, it's made so I can run off of some really bad gas. But, uh, you can see up here that it was a, uh, half track M2A1 was car half track M2. Then down here it says converted by E.W. Wiley Incorporated. So that was showing that it was started out as an M2 and then was converted to an M2A1. Kind of cool that still got the original plate. Just one more shot around the inside. You can see our ammo boxes over there. You can kind of see the three seats. Uh, even the guy in the middle has the little uh, um, hand hold so he can hold himself in the seat, as does the, uh, the co-driver. He's got one, too. So you know this thing was uh, pretty bouncy. Uh, on each side, you also have the, uh, uh, the flashlights. Uh, these are reproductions of the uh, 90 degree uh, standard flashlights that the, uh, that the guys were issued. Um, in the very back in the corner, I forgot to show that, that's the uh, spare headlights. So uh, if you did have issues with the headlights, you could, uh, uh, you had some spares, you could, you could stick back in the, uh, the pedestals. Which I guess I need to show that. I didn't show how that works. Yeah, if you needed to uh, remove the headlights, the military made it so you could uh, turn the little T-handle, and then you could pull out the headlight. So uh, then if you needed to replace it, you had some in the back you could stick in there. This one is not a, totally a headlight. It's a, uh, it's a, a blackout marker. Uh, you got your blackout lights here, and then you got the uh, what they call a marker light on top. Once again, it's got the little cat's eyes in it. So uh, it don't cast any light, but you can see it uh, from in front of the vehicle. You can see that there's somebody behind you. Well, if y'all got any questions, just put it in the comments below. Um, I didn't take a lot of shots underneath. It does have a few cool things under here. You notice right here, it's got a piece of plate armor protecting the side of the engine. It's also got another piece right up in there. And then you've also got this huge piece of armor protecting the oil pan. Uh, so if you run over a stump, a rock, a mine, something, it would help protect the, uh, the oil pan from damage. Uh, you see the shaft going up to the PTO. You see the bogey system on the back side. Another shot of the bogey system from the from the rear. This is kind of a cool shot. Okay, on this side, back to the engine, you got the uh, big oil filter canister, you got the exhaust manifold, you got the tube you pour the oil in, the carburetor, then the hose going back over to the uh, oil bath uh, air cleaner. Uh, you've also got another hose down here that runs to the vent system. Uh, once again, uh, it's, it's good for hot air, not real good for uh, cold air. You got your water slash gas can. Uh, one or the other, but not both. Uh, under here, you've got the axe, another one of your uh, Pioneer tools. Uh, this box right here holds the uh, really big 12-volt battery. Got another uh, uh, compartment for uh, storage, ammo, tools, whatever. Another couple of bags for the uh, for the guys to put their uh, private or uh, personal stuff in. Okay, to the bogey system or the tracks. People always have lots of questions about the tracks. Well, these tracks are an endless track. They don't have a pin where you can pull a pin and separate the tracks. They're like a rubber band, so they. Uh, they go on all at once. But the flanges, you can see the bolts around the outside of the flange on the uh, drive flange, and you've got the sprocket. And then the same thing back here on your tensioner. You can, uh, you can split that flange, so you can, pull, you can pull this front half, you can pull this front half off, 
and the front half off of the front one and it makes it a lot easier to take the tracks on and off uh, this thing if you're going to really look at it you know a lot of the guys that were going into world war ii were farm boys so uh the united states military did a great job of making stuff simple it was heavy it took big tools it took a lot of muscle but it wasn't complicated that's where the germans really screwed up they made all their stuff so complicated when it broke you couldn't fix it in the field the uh the u.s did a lot better on that um, this thing is really just a really short wheelbase truck if you look at this drive sprocket it's just got a regular differential in it like a truck and a really short drive shaft but instead of having wheels it's got a sprocket and that's what engages in the uh, the chain on the bottom of your tracks to uh, pull the vehicle then you got your bogey system your bogey system has uh, what they call volute springs now I might be saying that wrong that's these flat steel wound springs that uh, they control the suspension and allow the bogey system to float uh, it's pretty funny if you go over a speed bump or a big bump or something you fill it with the front tires but then when the rear hits it you don't feel it uh, the way the bogey system is designed it just kind of soaks it up now you have this big spring back here that's your adjustment for the uh, for the tracks um, there's a there's a very specific way that you uh, do you adjust the tracks but it's not once again it's not very complicated uh, you run a string all the way along from the uh, from the rear to the front you put a guy on it that weighs 150 170 pounds and you want the track to deflect about three quarters of an inch not very complicated but it got the job done uh, you got the return roller on top uh, for the track to run on uh, but it's 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 pretty simple um, lots of bearings lots of seals lots of grease now in the rear you notice the M2 does not have a uh... now in the rear you notice the M2 uh, A1 or M2 uh, doesn't have a door in the rear so you're going to have to climb in through the uh, through the front or over the back and over the back I'm sure was the preferred method uh, climbing in behind the front seat was uh, it's kind of a pain and you knock your head on everything but uh, uh, on the back you also see uh, tripods the big tripod is for the 50 cal and then you've got two smaller tripods for the 230 cals uh, that's so if you needed to abandon ship and you wanted to take up a position with your machine guns uh, outside the vehicle you could uh, dismount your uh, your machine guns and you could uh, uh, you could shoot at the bad guys from the ground the uh, the markings on the vehicle I didn't talk about that at the front uh, my dad was in uh, World War II uh, he was in the 71st Infantry uh, Company I and uh, based on uh, the history that I know of uh, his outfit uh, his outfit and the 10th Armored that's what this stands for here 10th Armored 54th Infantry they were in the same neck of the woods in uh, Germany and Austria towards the end of the war and daddy used to always talk about how uh, every chance they got he was infantry he was foot soldier uh, but he always said they liked to uh, catch a ride on any of the armor that they could uh, so they didn't have to walk everywhere but he used to talk about catching ride with the uh, with the armor divisions that came through and uh, I marked this one to a, a company that I thought he might have been uh, he might have caught a ride with the uh, on this side I've got it a uh, company B uh, vehicle 71 uh, company B goes with the name of the vehicle Bertha you always tried to name the vehicle with the first letter of what the company was and 71st was just in reference to he was in the 71st infantry so that's 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 what all what all that means uh, back here you got your blackout lights and uh, blackout light um, brake lights now the blackout lights if you look in there you can see you see that little triangle looking thing and when the lights are on that's all that's lit up now what the purpose of that was when you're doing a convoy at night you could turn on these blackout lights and a, and a whole lot of vehicles could follow each other without having headlights now obviously you're going to go wherever the guy in front of you went so if 
if he runs in a ditch or over a cliff, then uh, you're in trouble. But, uh, the, but the blackout lights were so they could run uh, convoys at night without being able to uh, see them from the air. Now over here you've got the uh, what they call the service tail light, the little red one on top. Uh, that works as like a, uh, a uh, light when you've got the headlights on as well as a, uh, a uh, brake light. But obviously you don't use your headlights in, uh, uh, when there's bad guys around, so you just use these, uh, these smaller lights with the little with the little triangles inside. Uh, this is where you would plug the trailer in. Uh, we said earlier how the uh, uh, the uh, knob on the dash, you could adjust the power going to the uh, electric brakes on the trailer. Well, that's where the trailer plugs in. You got your panel here where you would uh, hook the trailer to. Um, you know, these things, they had a lot of pulling power. They were great for pulling ammo trailers, howitzers, all kinds of stuff. So they were they were workhorses. So that's pretty much it on the outside. Let's climb over in the back and see what we can find. Now the first thing folks see when they walk up on it, and they always have a million questions, is the 50 cal. Uh, this was called a uh, M2 HB, uh, M2 heavy barrel. Um, my Deuce was another name they called it. Uh, this machine gun has been used for a lot of years in the military. It was around before World War II and they're still using it today in uh, different configurations. It runs up here in what they call the pulpit. You can see the ring that it can traverse on. You've got this trolley that the carriage is mounted to so you can, uh, you can spin the gun and also when you pull the pins out of it, then you've got uh, altitude too. So you could uh, shoot at airplanes or guys up on hills or whatever you needed to shoot at. You also have uh, two 30 cals in the back, uh, M1919s. Uh, shoot a 30 out six bullet, um, one on each side. They have the correct mounts with the correct uh, carriages for the guns or cradles. Uh, you can also see that the uh, the bullets are marked correctly. If you look at the uh, if you look at the side, they're belted uh, 4AP, one TR. That's uh, four armor piercing, one tracer. So you would have four black tips and one red tip. So that's the uh, the bullets always had the tips colored according to what they were. Here you also have a uh, 45 caliber uh, Thompson. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of these in the old gangster movies with the uh, with the uh, barrel uh, magazine. But uh, this one just used the straight magazine. The military, I don't think, used the uh, the big barrels. They they weighed a ton. But uh, but that's a uh, 45 caliber Thompson uh, with a uh, ammo box over here on the side or a ammo pouch. You see the gas cap right here. This is for one of your uh, tanks. You've got a tank on each side. Each one holds 30 gallons for a total of 60 gallons. Uh, so that gives you about 180 mile range. You know, I, I mentioned the uh, big three miles of the gallon earlier. I think that might be a little uh, optimistic. I don't believe she gets quite that good. You got some storage for uh, more ammo in the back. Uh, a box of ammo up here. We've got some more boxes for some 50 cal. You notice you had uh, two seats in the front, then you've got your center seat. Then in the back, you've got a center seat uh, to the back side of that one in the front. Then you can also seat uh, three guys on each side. So, so the uh, what you hauled was a maximum, usually a maximum of 10 crewmen. Um, and I probably forgot to mention that earlier. The early on, the main purpose of the half track was to carry infantry to support armor divisions, and they needed something that could go anywhere the tanks could go. So uh, they came up with a half track. Um, armor has to have infantry support, or uh, or, or you see some stuff that's been happening over between uh, Russia and Ukraine. Uh, you got to have feet on the ground watching around the tank or around the armor uh, because they can't see what's going on behind them or beside of them, and uh, troops can just you know sneak up on them and and, and shoot them. 
So uh, you got to have armor. Uh, and you, the infantry needs armor and the armor needs infantry. So uh, this was to carry the uh, infantry guys and keep up with the armor divisions. But I've got her kind of set up like I would at an event. Uh, I have little displays around with bags and canteens, uh, the little uh, uh, magazine pouch or the ammo pouch. Uh, I've got a belt here that's got a few uh, grenades on it. Um, people always like to uh, to look at the grenades. You know, these are the real deal, but they've been uh, they've been disarmed. But uh, it's amazing the weight of these. I'm sure you could uh, you could throw one of these a long ways. But as for the guns, they're replicas. These aren't real guns. Uh, we do a lot of events at high schools and schools and in uh, different things. And if they were real guns, they would not only cost a fortune, but they would. Uh, I would have a hard time doing some of the stuff that I do. I much rather have replicas that uh, look really good uh, and be able to do these events and teach kids and teach folks uh, about the vehicle than have to worry about. Yeah, it's a real gun, but I can't do anything but sit in the garage with it. So. Uh, but they're good replicas. They uh, they uh, look nice. Also got an antenna here. I don't have a radio yet, but the antenna is uh, is there and it, it's ready when I want to add that equipment. So what else we got going on up here? Let's see. You've got a uh, a hinged lid to where you can get in the top of the uh, the top of the. Uh, um, ammo box from the side you can get into the top shelf underneath the seats on the side you also have storage i've got a tarp in there right now but that could be used for ammo tools whatever same thing on this side and then other and half tracks also have storage under the floorboards which i don't have in this one um, you notice the handrail that goes around in front of the seats that's so that uh, when you're sitting there, you've got something to hold on to to hold yourself in the seats. Because obviously these things don't ride very good. And they will uh, beat you to death, I'm sure. Um, you know, going to events where I have to drive 15, 20 miles one way, I'm, I'm wore out by the time I got, get home. And uh, these guys were traveling hundreds of miles. So uh, World, World War II soldiers were some, uh, were some tough dudes, no doubt about it. The one thing I like to do it shows is show people the difference in the uh, bullets that the uh, that the half track carried. Uh, the first one I'll show you is the little uh, 45. That's just a standard little 45 like you'd have in a 45 automatic. Um, you know, just a little short, fat, slow bullet, but uh, it packed a kick. So uh, you obviously didn't want to get want to get hit by one. Uh, the 1919s on the side, the 30 caliber machine guns. They used a 30 out 6 bullet. Uh, you can see this one here is a black tip, so it's an armor piercing. But 30 out 6 is a, uh, to most folks, is a is a pretty big bullet. I mean, that's a large caliber for deer hunting or most any anything you want to do. It's a, it was a big bullet. But then you got the 50 cal, and it's a whole nother animal. You know, once again, this 50 cal is is black tip, so it's an armor piercing. But it is so much bigger than a uh, .30-06. I mean, look at the size of this thing. You know, that was uh, that was where the deal came by. If, uh, they said if you had a 30 caliber machine gun, um, you had to wait for the guy to stick his head out from behind the tree to shoot at him. Uh, if you had a 50 cal, you just uh, cut the tree down. So uh, I think that's probably a lot of truth in that. So anyway... I hope y'all enjoyed that. Like I said, if you got any questions, put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer it or get you a picture or or uh, do whatever I can to uh, to help answer the question. But this has been fun. Hopefully, we'll see you out in an event and we can uh, we can talk more. I'm just full of uh, useless information about half tracks and honeybees. I guess that uh, that matches the uh, the name of the uh, channel pretty good. Well, I hope you liked it. Y'all take care. If you did, hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it. Y'all take care.